All right, everybody. Corey G is back. I haven't had an interview in a while. Just been keeping up the website. But if you've noticed on the webpage, I have been posting uh, trailers. Posted it a few months ago. Posted it again the other day for Boone the Bounty Hunter, an upcoming movie starring John Hennigan, who you may know now as Johnny Mundo, formerly Johnny Nitro. J I believe he was also Johnny Morrison. And there was uh, he's been a lot of Johnnies. But I can't think of all the Johnnies he's been. So why don't I just let him tell you? Is uh, this week here? Uh, the wrestler my son hates more than anyone, Johnny Mundo, is joining us to talk about his new film, Boom the Bounty Hunter. Thanks for having me. And um, you pretty much nailed it. I feel like I'm probably the wrestler that has the most John-based ring names in the history of the business. You're, I, you're... I think that's true. I guess someone should fact-check it, but I, it feels right. I think you're right up there with all the names Brutus Beefcake had throughout that whole WCW run. I think you have surpassed him. But the one, the one constant with all my names is at least the John part, which is also my real name. <laughs> well, now, now I got well. And see, and that's cool because you're trans. Now, is your character's first name in the movie Boone? Is it Johnny Boone? <laughs> um, no, I've actually, uh, in the in the movie, Boone's name is Barry Noonan, which uh, was shortened to Boone. Although um, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the iceberg theory. Uh, how Hemingway wrote his stories. There's a lot of stuff that happens under the surface that you don't really address in the movie. So uh, the name Barry Noonan isn't talked about in the movie. It was just in our heads while we were writing it the whole time. So I thought that you would be like Johnny Boone because, you know, the other day I was just showing my son some Jackie Chan movies. And, you know, if you watch those police story movies, he was always Officer Jackie Chan. So uh, obviously you're probably a better actor because you know. Uh, the difference between your real name and your uh, movie name. So I'm already going to give you points over Jackie Chan. Uh, I don't. Even, I, I feel like I should refund those points. Uh, yeah. Jackie Chan's is such a such a legend. I don't know if I, anyone should get any points over uh, over his legacy, especially for Police Story, Super Cop. Um, big fan of Jackie Chan though, and uh, I I did actually make a conscious choice to uh, want to have a character name in, in the movie Boone the Bounty Hunter because unlike wrestling it's the one movie I mean it could lead to a, a sequel or a, <laughs> a TV series hopefully but the uh, the character of Boone is its, its own self-contained character outside the universe of wrestling and I wanted that to be uh, evident by the by the name change now the movie and it generated uh, a lot of interest on my page because it kind of looked like you get the mix of the martial arts, uh, the parkour, of course, which you're famous for incorporating in your wrestling. Also looked at uh, some humor in there, and uh, I noticed a, a little tinge. Maybe I'm mistaken, especially looking at the poster and kind of seeing a little throwback to maybe some '80s action, like the '80s and '90s straight to video kind of fair. Um, you nailed it. That's a uh... The, the three things that have influenced me like the most probably um, I I grew up on action movies and professional wrestling um, the stuff that Jackie Chan did but also Bloodsport, Die Hard Predator, Running Man, Terminator um, even a lot of the stuff that Jet Li did so a lot of the 80s action movies whether or not they were straight to video but like the bigger stuff like Big Trouble in Little China and Die Hard, um, that kind of machismo with a wink type of thing, like the way that Bruce Willis always seemed to enjoy the mayhem in, in those style of movies, combined with uh, pro wrestling, one other passion, and uh, and parkour, which I've like pretty much fell in love with and gotten into it more and more as as the years have gone by. I, I I like parkour. Uh, let me rephrase that. I like watching it. I don't do it because I busted my ankle fans in three spots taking out trash in flip flops. So obviously I'm not meant to jump off buildings. But um, I will I will say that I, anytime <laughs> I get hurt, it's usually doing something like that. It's uh, like getting out of the shower or walking downstairs. For some reason, usually the dangerous stuff isn't the stuff that I get hurt on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's a rare to see, though, because the only parkour films I can think of, which you and I had, had talked about the, the uh, earlier, was the D-13 and the D-13U, and then the American remake, uh, Brick Mansions. But I can't think of a lot of 
uh, parkour films where uh, as you watch the trailer on the website or on the Boon site, the uh, you know the you see all the parkour running and the parkour action. So I'm going to assume that you, much like Jackie Chan, did your own stunts in this film. Yeah, that was a big a big part of the reason that I want to do the film. And those movies that he named, the District D Fifteen, obviously um, amazing and amazing parkour. David Bell and Joe Raffaetti. And that was one of the first times I saw parkour in its current iteration in a movie. But the, uh, the stuff that Jackie Chan was doing in the 90s in Super Cop, Rumble in the Bronx, I would argue that he was doing parkour before the term parkour was coined, even. The, his style of stunt fighting incorporated a ton of movement. And um, a lot of his movement was uh, a little sloppy by choice. It's the way that he moved and he expressed his uh, frenetic effort to either catch someone or get away from someone with uh, with his movement, which is why I think he ended up becoming a perfect action star, a perfect action comedy star. And um, him and the stuff he did in those movies is, is what I was trying to emulate a lot with Boone. And I, I wanted to do my own stunts, I wanted to do parkour, and I wanted to integrate a lot of pro wrestling into uh, the action design of Boone because I feel like that's what I'm best at. There's, there's been a ton of movies where I've had to do uh, sword fights or um, some screamer or hand-to-hand hand trapping and and honestly I'm not I'm not the best at Wing Chun. I like watching it but uh, I didn't grow up on those movements. I grew up as a captain on my high school wrestling team wrestling in college and I've been a pro wrestler for the past 15 years I've wrestled all over the world that set of movements those movement patterns are what I'm the best at and I'm picking that to use for the action design is is I think one of the things that makes the movie so fun to watch and you were also you wrote the story as well correct we had a we had several writers on this project but but yeah I had I wrote Boone, the original concept was I wanted to find a reason for people to use parkour or someone to use parkour to do something other than run away. In the District 13 movie, it seemed like David Bell was always running away and he was awesome at it. And it felt like the first thing was, what if you got this big dude who's doing parkour to chase people? (laughs) It just seemed funny and scary and then after that, I'm like, well, maybe the big dude should be a bounty hunter. And he's chasing his skips and using parkour. But then I added on the, uh, the reality show because I wanted there to be a reason for him to be doing flashy show-off type stuff. And getting into a little bit more of a free-running type style than just straight point A to point B, which is more traditional parkour. Now I, and then I, the rest of it started happening. Now, I noticed in the trailer, and, well, I didn't notice it, my wife noticed it, and she said, I have to ask you, is, will your shirt be off the entire film? Um, there are some scenes where I'm wearing a vest or sleeveless shirt. Okay, that but will make her happy I, and me slightly uncomfortable. I think, uh, <laughs> now that I'm actually reflecting back, I don't think I wore sleeves for the entire movie. And you're right, the majority of the movie there was little to no shirt okay she'll be the ladies you heard it there you'll be uh, all happy for that and uh, i noticed uh, the cast too is pretty good like you have uh your uh your buddy in the film uh denny is the character's name he was on supernatural i remember show i'm a big fan of um Osric and, chow yeah um he uh him and i had the the same agent at the time we were we we're looking for someone to play denny and um when uh when his name was brought up i was beyond stoked I'd, uh, I'd seen some of his work on Supernatural and um, he's a super talented actor obviously and accomplished but also a, a really really dope person and um, fun, funny enough he uh, was on the Canadian National Wushu team so he's a really talented martial artist in his own right well, and then I noticed, and here's here's the the conflict at my house. You have my favorite MMA fighter in history, 
and the one that my wife hates more than any MMA fighter in history, Quentin Rampage Jackson. How could you not like Quentin Rampage Jackson? She What's was, wrong with her? She was a Chuck Liddell <laughs> fan, and when Rampage knocked him out, Chuck became a big loser. No offense, he could kick my ass. He went down the toilet after Rampage dropped him there, so she's never forgiven Rampage for that. Well, I don't I don't blame him. But in that sport, it's, you can do what you got to do if you or him. And um, I think if she met Rampage, she would uh, change her mind because he's the teddy, he's a teddy bear of a, of a person. He's the nicest guy ever, and um, it's, it's hard not to have a conversation with Rampage without laughing. He, he takes himself, he doesn't take himself seriously. He takes fighting seriously. He, he takes acting very seriously. But um, he's just a, a fun-loving guy. He's really fun to be around. Well, I was very impressed with him in the A-Team. I actually liked the A-Team movie, unlike, and I get a lot of shit for that. And I thought he did really good. I thought he would uh, transition a lot more into film, but his love, it must his first love must obviously be fighting. Yeah, he's a. Uh, we were we were lucky to have him for uh, for the days that we had him on Boone because he is a full time fighter, and um, he does a he does a lot of stuff. He, he's got a lot of um, his own projects, um, cooking in the fire, and uh, he's constantly training and fighting. And if you're I mean if you're a fan of him, you follow him. He, he fought recently too. He's a he's a busy guy. Well. Uh- why don't you tell us the plot of Boone? What it, what is the? Uh, I mean, we get we get kind of the general idea from the previews and that, but what can you tell us a little more in depth about it? Boone is a reality show bounty hunter who uses pro wrestling and parkour to boon delinquent celebrities like Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> but when when his uh, reality show is canceled for. Uh, crappy ratings he comes up with a plan to go after a real criminal in Mexico when Boone goes to Mexico with his crew um, things get a little crazy and uh, his crew gets arrested and then Boone has to take a step back and realize that there might be more important things than uh, saving the show and ratings and he needs to make a decision between being a real hero or just saving himself. Um, if you take another step back, you can look at the movie as a character study. Boone the Bounty Hunter plays this bounty hunter character on this TV show. And the lines between who he is in personal life and in uh, his public life have become blurred. And he starts to take him himself too seriously on the TV show, which is why he makes the the uh, mistake of going to Mexico without preparation to go after this real criminal. And um, that specific thing is something that I always find interesting because frequently in wrestling, I think the same thing happens. Classy Freddie Blassie wrote about that in his book where uh, he was at a diner with his mom and the, uh, the waiter brought him the wrong pancakes. And uh, Freddie Blassie like just snapped the pan and was like, "This little neck cake isn't fit this time." I'm trying Freddie Blassie's boots. <laughs> Take him with these pants. And um, said his mom was like, "Why don't you just be nice to people like you uh, like you were when you were a kid?" And um, he kind of reflected on it in a moment. And um, he wrote in his book that he just spent 25 years playing this, you know, playing classic Freddie Blassie, being a heel, and it started to take over when uh when it came to instinctually reacting to stuff in real life. Um, that same identity crisis is something that Boone is going through. And um, he, he has to make that decision at the end of the movie, whether he's going to save himself or whether he's going to be a real hero. Are there... Uh, Jason David Frank is in this movie too, correct? Um, uh, he's not. Jason, Jason David Frank is a real good friend of mine. We're doing a couple other projects together, and um, he's going to be in Chicago tomorrow. And he's uh, he's helping me do the screening of Blue and the Bounty Hunter in Chicago after C2E2. Um, we're working on a, a web series for Valiant Comics together. Oh, and, the uh, Ninjack I mean, one, right? Yeah. 
and um, I'm in his uh, his personal like project, Black Unicorn. Um, I'm uh, I'm playing a part in that for for him too. So uh, he's a he's a fan of uh, of Boone, and um, he's a he's a he's a really good dude. And uh, I'm going to be excited to see him tomorrow. And we got some other stuff in the in the works. Are there any other of the Lucha Underground, my favorite promotion? Are there any other uh, wrestler, any cameos in Boone from those guys? Chavo Guerrero makes a makes a cameo. Um, Mr. Cisco, a short cameo. <laughs> Steve Payne, who was a uh, Pindar, makes a makes a cameo. Uh, Aaron Aguilera has a cameo. Fernando Owens has a cameo. Josh Barnett, the MMA fighter, is in is in the Boone for a heartbeat. Um, there's a ton of people that came out. Now, when I was uh, looking at your uh, right now, Boone is you're doing some some screenings. You have a uh, the Chicago screening, and do you, did you do the LA screening, or is that one coming up as well? Um, the the LA screening is coming up May first, um, a week from Monday, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be the first time the uh, the director Rob Kerbison is going to be able to sit in a theater full of people and uh, and watch Boone and um, Rob uh, really went out of his way to, to make sure the movie was done right and completed uh, super talented guy and I'm excited to actually excited to hear the Q&A when, when Rob's talking too. <laughs> I want to hear his take on, on some uh, some parts of the process now uh, when can the rest if we can't make it out to these uh, the screenings um, when do uh, when does like myself and the listeners and that when do when do we get our chance to see Boone on May 9th, Boone will be available on Amazon, iTunes, and VOD, which which means uh, Cox Cable, Comcast, Time Warner on the on your little t- cable boxes on the TV. Um, you can you can order Boone there or iTunes, and Amazon on May 9th. On June 6th, Boone is going to be available on DVD exclusively at Walmart, and then um, after that, it'll be available in other places as well i have to wait till june 6 fans see that because you know I, i'm not a streamer you guys can stream 99.9 uh, percent of our listeners stream i still like my actual uh, disc in my hand so uh, i'll get to hear about it first but uh, yeah i noticed something and because you've actually done a lot of work um that a lot of people not might not be familiar with you've had uh the you were in simbad war of the furies I've seen you on a few of the uh, Superpower Beatdowns, and uh, one that I've noticed coming up is, uh, it looks like you have a series of movies, possibly, uh, Diablo Steel? Oh, man, Diablo Steel is a great project. It uh, it hasn't been officially greenlit yet, but um, it's a, a really powerful script uh, written by a buddy of mine, Ryan, and... Um, we should we should talk about that more hopefully next year, but uh, in the meantime it's uh it's ready to go. It, the script is dynamite, and um, partial funding is in. But uh, the way the movie business works is uh, that means we could end up shooting Diablo Steel in a couple months or a couple years. So it's uh it's up in the air still right now. now one thing that I and this is a, a rumor I've heard, and I've heard it from good sources, people that. At, at a time worked for Lucha Underground we'll just say that but is it true that the, and I don't know if you can discuss this or not it's not to give away storylines is because uh, Lucha Underground I, I think everybody here watches it but for those of you that don't unlike a typical wrestling show it's actually more like you're watching a a, a television show uh, and um, I've heard that the rumor is the end game to do like a big Avengers style movie with all of you guys from Lucha Underground is is that true? Or can you not comment on that? Um, I I can say that being discussed, it has been discussed, and um, I think that's another one where I think that would be awesome. Um, the roster, I'm sure, would all be stoked if if that were the case. But uh, if and when and how is a TBD to be determined. I would love it. I'm. Everyone knows I am a El Santo movie mark, uh, hands down. I love my. Uh, and and if you see that Vampiro next time you see him, 
Tell them that us, us people here at the uh, movie graveyard really want to see the dead sleep easy, but we can't find it anywhere. The dead sleepies? The dead sleep I'm... easy. Okay, dead sleep easy. It's a movie he made. <laughs> apparently, sounds like a different movie altogether. No, this is that, <laughs> that sleep easy. dead sleep easy. Okay. Yeah, he made it's him and the Sensei Kreese, Martin Cove, and we've heard about it for years. Yet we none of us, no one can find it. I'm gonna see him tomorrow in Chicago. I'll ask him about it. Yeah, I I tweet him about it, but he doesn't answer me. He must be a he must be ducking the question, fans. It's not like he doesn't know who I am. Actually, he doesn't know Where who the fuck I am. Where is this movie? <laughs> I have to make him answer. Yeah, the, you answer you. you Break the scoop there. Uh, Vampiro's uh, uh, one of my son's favorite commentators, actually. Um, Vamp's super, super good guy. Talented. I was... You know, funny, like, uh, I always thought that he looked really cool. Like, um, he's got, like, the shaved head and the tattoos on his, uh, on his, on his skull there. But, um, last time I saw him, he'd grown his hair out. Really? And, um... He has a really nice head of hair, which uh, took me by surprise. Because I was like, you know, this, this whole time, I just, I don't know, I assumed that, like, you were losing your hair or it was gone or something. But he's got kind of like a like a black, like, emo haircut now, which uh, <laughs> is really interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, that would, because, uh, you know, last time I had some with the hair was the WCW run when he was, like, with the Misfits and everything, and he had the long dreads. But... Yeah, and then the next yeah, time most, I saw most him, people was... that, most people that shave their heads, they, they do it for a reason. Yeah, mine is, I started losing mine, so that's why I keep mine bald, so I, uh, I mean, I could, you know, yeah. I could grow it out, I could be a Paul Heyman guy and grow it out, but I, I haven't gotten that brave yet. And I keep it clean. I'm, I'm fighting right now. I think uh, when my hair, my hair starts to go, I'm going to shave it, it be so much easier. Give you, now, it would... For those of you that don't remember, I, I don't skew a lot of the younger crowd, mostly the, you know, the 25 to 40-year-old or 25 to 60, I think. And a lot of people in the U.K. Uh, who might not be familiar with uh, Tough Enough, which was a WWE reality show that you uh, you were in the third, you were the winner of the third season, I believe, correct? Yeah. And, um, man, um, I don't know if you were follow me on Instagram or not, but just uh, a few days ago on Wednesday, I went back to OVW for the first time in over 10 years, and uh, got to spend uh, two days with Matt Capitelli and you know, um, catch up with him. How was he doing? I remember he was he was very ill for a while. He's uh, doing well. So, he, he's had a real hard run. He, uh, got into it a couple times developmental and then it was the week before he was supposed to be called up he uh, caught a punch to the head at a TV taping and uh, and they, they scanned his head and found a huge brain tumor which um, was cancerous he had it removed and had a few years of chemo and radiation and um, he he uh, he came back from that, and now he's uh, he's managing a couple of gyms down there, and he's still helping out with the uh, the amateur class at the uh, OPW, and um, he's really integrated into the the community down there at OPW. And um, when I saw him at the gym, it was pretty cool. Like he's still training, he's still getting it done, still loves wrestling, um, and a uh, happy guy. Now, the, the, what I'm about to ask you, it, let me say, fans, the, what I'm about to say, my opinion and views do not reflect, I don't think they do, uh, those of uh, Johnny Hannigan Morrison Mundo, we'll say Johnny hmm. Morrison at the time because it was WWE, uh, in my opinion, okay. uh, a lot of people didn't, might not know you tried out for Tough Enough too. Oh, yeah. And there's the video online of that fucking beaver that I really can't stand, who I, I have heat with... Uh, <laughs> Saying how uh, you're uh, you're just mocking them and and it's oh, the dumbest Kevin thing. Dunn. 
Because it, 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 if you haven't seen it, fans, this this fucking gap tooth bastard sits there and he says, "Well, this guy <laughs> just wants to be an athlete and be an entertainer and flip and run and jump, and it's just disrespectful to the business." It's like, well, but the business is entertaining people, flipping, running, jump. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Uh, is, is there any bitterness you might have, or did you just figure, "Fuck you, I got my job here next year." This. The second thing you just said. Okay. But um, on, honestly, also, in retrospect, um, I spent the uh, the year after I got turned down from Tough Enough 2 um, studying wrestling and uh, training, and also I like, graduated. So that uh, that additional year of, of time that I that I had ended up working out really well for me. I ended up leaving UC Davis with a degree. And um, when I came back for Tough Enough 3, I was really prepared. I upped my gymnastics training. I started training pro wrestling when I could um, because I was still a full-time student. And I'd upped like a... I I doubled down in training pretty much in in every way. And uh, I think that's part of the reason I was so prepared for Tough Enough 3. And I ended up winning. Well, and it was a no-brainer. Like, if, if you even noticed toward the end, they didn't even focus as much on you because it was like, okay, this guy's winning. You know, I mean, it was it was just dead obvious. But, uh, you, you know, I, I liked to – I was always a mark for Al Snow, uh, especially when he was in – believe it or not, I liked him the most in Smoky Mountain when he was with Unabomber, who was actually uh, – went on to become Kane. But they were hilarious. And uh, – I, and I always had a crush on Ivory. I, I still do have a crush on Ivory. I have no shame admitting that. I don't know what she does now or what she looks like, but I'm sure in my mind she's I, still I don't gorgeous. blame you. She still looks fabulous. Yeah, oh. and she's, uh, she's a sweetheart of a person. So, and a real genuine person, too. Not not everyone in entertainment is, uh, is genuine. She She is. Her and Molly Holly, I had the hugest crushes on. I, I, I and everybody's like a Sunny and Sable guy, but no, I was a, uh, I was a Molly Holly and uh, Ivory were my two, uh, my two favorites back Don't then. Don't get me started on Molly. She's, she's really special. Um, she's a really giving and caring person, and um, a lot of people get changed by, uh, by the business, and she didn't. She always stayed true to herself, and um, is a, is an amazing person. I've seen a few interviews. I don't know if they're current or older. She works with like uh, she does a lot of work with her church, I believe, uh, like with uh, uh, people in rehab and stuff like that. It sounds like. Yeah, and um, I mean, there was there was one time we were on the road and um, we were doing a show in Guatemala, and it was funny. She was uh, she'd happened to uh, be living in Guatemala, building uh, homes for underprivileged youth, <laughs> and um. Wow came to the hotel and had breakfast with everybody and uh it was a it was a cool like it was a cool holy shit moment you're like hey, molly holly like retired from wrestling and she's living in guatemala now helping helping people <laughs> um as opposed to what the majority of uh, pro wrestlers do when they retire and uh pretty cool and eye-opening like you can do whatever you want with your life and your time and um she's certainly aware of that and does that and you are like you said you are you and uh i don't want to mispronounce her name in lucha underground tanya taya taya i can never get it right fans uh you and her are are an actual that was the first thing i asked you uh you two are a couple actually off screen as well as on is do, do we see her in boone at all um, no, Boone, Boone was shot before uh, before we got together. She's uh, she's helping me a lot with uh, screenings and um, organizing things. Actually, she uh, she just called on the other line a couple times, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call her back when we finish. Last night she had a uh, a Tijuana street fight for the uh, women's championship of uh, AAA. It was her versus Ayako Hamada. Oh, she's calling again right now. She must know that we're talking about her. Yes, and um, she... I've, I've heard from a couple people, Vampiro included, that it was a potential match of the year candidate. I heard it was an amazing match, and um, I still haven't talked to her. She's uh, She's been traveling. Oh, you, oh uh, that, well, you're the AAA. You're a triple crown winner in AAA, so to speak. You're a triple-triple. 
first ever uh, tri campeon. Um, yeah, the uh, mega champion, the Latino Americano champion, and the uh, Crucero Mundial, which is uh, which is one of the other championships. Um, it's been really fun being down in Mexico. The uh, the fans in Mexico are nuts, and um, the the story that we're doing right now with uh with me, Ty, and Kevin Cross is uh is working out really well, and um, I'm excited to uh I'm really excited for this year's Triple Mania. I'll just leave it at that. Now, obviously, she's trying to reach. You. I won't I won't keep you here, but another second. Uh, the uh, one other thing I like to know, you were uh, obviously uh, when you leave wrestling or uh, do you do plan to try to devote all your time into like acting? Um, I plan to devote most of my time to entertainment and um, I say acting right now is what I'm most interested in in, in that world but um, I've got three other scripts right now that I'm uh, that I've written and are in various stages of a one's a first draft, one's a third draft, the other is a draft four right now uh, that are hopefully going to be ready to go. And I'm hoping when Moon uh, comes out, my potential to get projects greenlit will be unlocked and I'll be able to start working a lot more as a writer, producer, and actor. Um, with regard to wrestling, though, I don't think there's anything that's as much fun as wrestling. The uh, the instant like feedback that you get from the fans, like the conversation of energy that happens between a pro wrestler in the ring and fans in the audience, is immediate, and um, there's nothing else like it. So I'm I'm not planning on retiring ever if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone eventually has to retire, but I'm I'm going to try to continue to wrestle for as long as I can. I'm just going to throw this at you because I'm, I'm working on a few different ideas of, of movies, and I think I've, I've got a script. And I just tell me if this sounds good to you. See, now there's a werewolf on the loose. Okay. We, we could easily change werewolf because I'm trying to incorporate that into the Fast and Furious Part 9. So we could change into, like, a devil-worshipping gang and maybe even have, like, Pentagon as uh, as one of them. But... You know, you would be one of the cops assigned to the case, but you would be more of the straight lace cop, where you would be put you the no nonsense kind of by the book, chapter eighteen and all that, and then you get teamed up with a new detective from another city, and he's more like kind of, you know, that crazy kind of cop, and we're gonna have him played by Steven Seagal. Ooh, would you true be true law man? Would you be interested <laughs> in a movie like that? Man, it would be... It's so weird that I, of course I'd be interested. Um, I feel like Steven Seagal would be better as a straight-laced cop. <laughs> no, because if you really watch Lawman, I deem that as the greatest situation comedy reality show of all time. I, uh, I echo your sentiments. And I've heard uh, I've heard several stories from uh, some of the people that produced Lawman and um, had to deal with uh, cleaning up Stevie's little messes on set frequently. And um, they uh, have so many stories that are uh, ridiculous about uh, him in that show. You know, Rob Van Dam <laughs> just did that movie with him not that long ago. Uh, that's right. I forget. Uh, is it the one of the that. sniper movies or something like that? Or I haven't seen it yet. I I, I I just I'm excited to see it. I'm a I'm a huge fan of Rob Van Dam. Um, and uh, I I'm a big fan of him in wrestling and in movies. And I I think that something's gonna really hit for him one of these days. I liked Wrong Side of Town, and I think I really like when when RVD was going for the big fight at the end. They were playing his theme music in the background. Yeah, that was I'm, clever. I'm with you on that. I like uh, I like it when wrestlers embrace their background in in movies. You know what I mean? In, in the, as opposed to uh, not wanting to play a theme music and do something different. Um, it's fun for me. I like that part too. 
Well, and, and you know, I like when they incorporate when you get when you get a lot of you guys in a movie. Like I'm really looking forward to, and I know you're you're good friends with the Miz, correct? Yes. I'm really lo- now. I, I I thought the Marine movies, and I think they're they're okay. But I'm really looking forward to this one coming out Tuesday. My son and I both because, you know, you've got all the social outcasts are in it. No Emmy's in it. Maurice is in it. I like they get a whole group in there. Have the have the Miz fight this heel gang. Only they're bikers. You know what I mean? I just think I think that's just that's what they should be doing with their movies. Agreed. Countdown, you know, Kane is the straight laced detective, the captain of the force, and there's Dolph Ziggler is the you know, the play by your own rules cop. It was great. The the scenes with, with Kane and Dolph Ziggler were my favorite part of Countdown. I I couldn't help but smile every time those two were on screen together. <laughs> Especially Kane is like the the hard nosed like straight edge uh, police sergeant. <laughs> Well, now the, the last question I ask you because we do focus a lot on movies. What it what would be your fa- What is your favorite movie other than Boone? What is your favorite movie? Oh man, it's it's hard for me to pick. Uh, possibly Rumble in the Bronx. Possibly Drunken Master Two. But my favorite movie changes all the time, depending on the mood that I'm in. Um, Rumble in the Bronx what I would say now and uh, movie favorites are subjective I uh, I skateboarded to the movie theater when I was a kid and watched Rumble in the Bronx in the actual theater probably five times um, like, I feel like me and my buddies did that like twice a week for a couple of weeks for some reason we just watched that same movie over and over again and um, it reminds me of uh, being young and being completely in awe of, uh, of what I was watching, and um, for that reason, uh, Rumble in the Bronx. You know, believe it or not, I just showed it to my son about two weeks ago, and the when he fights the entire gang in their hideout, my son's eyes, I don't think he blinked once. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's all the Jackie in his, in his prime, which is amazing. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, for coming on the show this interview fans i move quick it'll be up tonight uh so we can you still have time when you hear this to go to the chicago screening and uh, if you if that doesn't give you enough to prepare um where do they where can they get their tickets for the los angeles screening um for uh for tickets for the la screening for more information about the release of boone you can check the boone facebook page boone the bounty hunter my personal facebook page john morrison uh the real one, not the fake ones, because there's a lot of fakes and it's confusing. You can follow me on Twitter at the Real Morrison or on Instagram at John Hennigan. I want to thank you so much for coming. On. I, I hope you can come back on again uh, after the movie comes out. Uh, we can talk oh, yeah, about. Let's do a follow up. We can, uh, you know. And you know what? I'm I'm gonna put this out. I'll put this out in the interview. Uh, any of the any of the guys, any of your friends. Uh, any any guys listening, if if you have something you need to promote or anything, uh, you know, feel free to give them my phone number. I I don't mind. I'm a fan of the business. I I always like to help uh, help the guys and everything out on side projects. They can contact me for anything they need. Well, I will. We'll do. And um, thanks again for having me. And I'll uh, I'll definitely be sure to take you up on the uh, the follow up interview after the release. Yeah, and don't forget to send me some photos too. Okay. My photos, I mean, email me a few new photos of Boone, and, uh, you know, thank you very much. I I, I would like to ask you, because he can't hear this, but uh, if you have any free time in the next few days, uh, if you'd like to call me and cut a promo on my son for for booing you so bad, that would be pretty damn funny, in my opinion. Um, Totally. Remind me, though, because I'm I'm, uh, ridiculously busy the next uh, couple weeks. All righty. Well, thank you very much for coming. If you need anything, let me know. Fans, the movie is Boone the Bounty Hunter. Get it on video and on demand. Uh, be coming out on Blu-ray, or excuse me, DVD exclusively at the Walmart. Uh, stay tuned to uh, the Boone page. Stay tuned to our page. We'll bring you more up to date. And once again, I want to thank you so much for coming on. This has been a lot of fun for me. Same here. Thanks again for having me, and uh, I'll catch you down the line. All right. You take care of yourself. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Hey.